a surprise return from a fan-favorite character, some New York realism, and the most terrifying ghost face we've ever seen. Scream 6 might just become your favorite scary movie. Here's a scenario that'll hit much too close to home for anyone who's ever lived in or even visited the Big Apple. It's a late weekday night and you're waiting patiently to check out of your local grocery store. Suddenly, two clearly terrified girls burst into the building and go right to the counter to scream unintelligible things at the store manager. Obviously, at your wit's end and with absolutely no patience left, you turn around with all the passive-aggressive attitude you can possibly muster and whine about how Honestly, how could anyone not be obsessed with this incredible line reading, which is far and away the highlight of the entire trailer? Yes, yes, the harrowing set piece that follows is important too, where Ghostface bursts into the store, stabs that poor goateed man right in the gut, and proceeds to hunt his prey with a shotgun in the claustrophobia-inducing aisles of a typical city convenience store. But the first rule of any movie set in New York City is as simple as this. Get the local flavor right. So on that note, Annoyed Goatee Guy is a very good sign that Scream 6 will be doing justice to all of the city's wonderful idiosyncrasies. Let me tell you something. New York is the greatest city in the world. As entertaining as 2022 Scream was, a few detractors were never fully won over by the reveal that Sam Carpenter was Billy Loomis's daughter. Admittedly, the twist made a certain amount of sense to keep the Ghostface killings in family, as it were, and Scream 6 appears to be following that thread to its logical conclusion. Here, we see Sam confessing that, There's a darkness inside of me. It followed me here. And it's gonna keep coming for us. Sounds like a predicament that would require some expert help, right? Well, funny you should say that. There probably isn't a Scream fan out there who is happy to hear that Nev Campbell's Sidney Prescott wouldn't be part of the action for the first time in franchise history in Scream 6. While the behind-the-scenes reasons point towards a continued disappointing trend for women in film, the in-universe explanation would seem to be a little easier to justify. These new post-Craven movies are now about the younger generation of characters, and continuing to shoehorn Sydney into the story might end up doing more harm than good. But that's not to say that no previous franchise veterans ought to show up and impart their knowledge upon our new heroes, right? Cue one of the fan-favorite side characters to ever appear in the series, Hayden Panettiere's Kirby Reed. Introduced in Scream 4, Kirby quickly became a highlight of the film. Though the last time we saw her, she was a bloody mess at the hands of that film's secret killer. Time has clearly done wonders, however, as Kirby indeed lives and is back to team up with the rest of the cast. Kirby says, in the understatement of the century, We share a certain history. How and why does she willingly return to the world of Ghostface? We'll undoubtedly find out soon enough. Well, that's one way to make this sequel stand apart from the rest. After a glimpse of Ghostface's famous question graffitied on some random alleyway, we get to the real centerpiece of the trailer. Led by Gale and Kirby, our new group of protagonists stumble upon an alarming sight, a shrine created by some obsessive individual in honor of Ghostface's of franchise past. No less than nine robed mannequins are proudly on display at the front of the creepy room, which matches up perfectly with all the killers who've suited up throughout the previous five movies. But look closely and you can spy all sorts of fun little details. There's Billy Loomis's bloodied white undershirt, Stu Mocker's red bathrobe, and Tatum Riley's schoolgirl outfit, all from the original 1996 movie. That flannel shirt sure seems like it used to belong to Jill, the teen killer from Scream 4 played by Emma Roberts. And you could even glimpse other deep cuts hiding in the brief glimpse. How did someone get their hands on all these items, which surely would have been in police custody all these years? Hmm. What Scream movie would feel complete without that familiar phone call from an unknown number? That carefully modulated Ghostface voice taunting their victim? And a surprise attack from behind by the masked assailant? This time, Gail Weathers is the unfortunate individual on the other end of this phone call. And even a handgun isn't enough to dispatch the threat of this particular killer, who boasts that, But there's never been one like me, Gail. <laughs> In a franchise defined by the perpetually clumsy antics of whoever happens to be behind the villain's mask, Scream 6 seems dead set on throwing a curveball at audiences, with perhaps the most proficient killer we've seen yet. Combine that with the new setting of this sequel, and it truly feels like we're in for something brand new and game-changing this time around. The preview ends with a frenzied montage of blink-and-miss-it details before arriving at the now-familiar site of Ghostface hiding out incognito among other costume-wearing travelers on the same New York subway car that our heroes are currently on. 
we see some sort of ghost face themed movie projector showing lots of creepy black and white images. Sam covered in blood and wielding a gun as she taunts her would-be killer, and a glimpse of some of the new cast members. All this then builds to the frightening subway set piece, which is already a scary enough setting on its own under the most normal of circumstances, much less with masked murderers on the prowl. Scream 6 definitely isn't messing around. We'll have to wait and see who escapes the carnage unscathed when the sequel comes to theaters on March 10, 2023.